Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa, if you are new here. Now, the November 3rd presidential election of 2020 is just around the corner. Now, I've spent a lot of time Googling away, trying to figure out who is the best candidate for Catholics to vote for, and I stumbled across a website called Pope Francis Voter. On this website, it's supposed to help you navigate what the church teaches and find out what candidate is the best candidate to vote for. What's really cool about this website is it has a quiz that you can take, and based on the results, it tells you who you align with. If you align with Joe Biden or President Donald Trump. So I took the quiz and the website is absolutely horrible. So I decided that I wanted to take the quiz with you guys right now and go over the answers and go over the results and kind of refute some of the points that they bring up against both candidates. This website is not Catholic whatsoever and you guys will see what I'm talking about when we take the quiz and we look at the results. This is gonna be a long video. I'm just letting you guys know that from right now. So I will include timestamps in the description bar down below. Also. I'll I'll give you guys a lot of resources and a lot of facts in this video so I have all my sources links down below and there will be a blog post for this video so if you want to see it in written form check out the description bar for that so this is what the website looks like and on this website we are given nine questions that we are to answer before we begin I just want to say that these questions are very skewed the way that they're asked it'd be so hard for someone to say no to them and if you say yes to them it makes you lean towards one candidate over the other so so keep that in mind while we're answering these questions. I'll be answering yes to every question that is posed to me, but know that these questions have a underlying meaning underneath them. So question number one says, do you support the sacred call to vote for candidates in line with Catholic teaching? Do you believe being pro-life encompasses more than a stance on abortion? Do you support health care for all pregnant women? Do you support protections for people in poverty and without a home? Do you support food assistance for mothers, infants, and children? Do you support protections for elderly people? Do you support the ability for workers to live in dignity with a living wage and a safe workplace? Do you support the humane treatment of migrants? Do you reject the sins of racism and hatred? Let us submit and see what our answers are. So apparently it says you agree with Biden. Your Catholic voter score is 100%. Now I've taken this quiz a few times and when I put no on questions, it would say my voter score is 80% Biden, 20% Trump. So that's the way that they kind of break it down. If you guys want to take this quiz and you want to see where your score will be, I'll have the quiz linked down below. It says Joe Biden shares Catholic priorities. His policies will protect people in poverty, the elderly, and migrants, and reject racism. You are a Pope Francis voter, and you must prioritize these sacred issues in the voting booth this November. Sign up below to join our campaign and help other Catholics become Pope Francis voters. So now what the website does is it goes through all the questions and it gives the issues in detail and you guys will you guys will understand why I'm taken a little bit back by this website and based on the results and the details that they give, I will be providing you guys with facts about these issues. So hopefully it will help persuade you to go ahead and research for yourself and not just take what this website says. Also, don't take what I say. Go check it out. Go look at my sources. Go on Google, though Google is skewed right now, but go onto any website and try looking for the facts because I don't want to tell you who to vote for as this website shouldn't tell you who to vote for because their answer is very skewed. But anyways, let us get into the first question. Question one says, do you support the sacred call to vote for candidates in line with Catholic social teaching? Biden. Vice President Biden knows his Catholic teaching. More importantly, he lives it. Biden brings his Catholic values to his politics, and he believes everyone should have the ability to vote for the common good. He plans to restore the Voting Rights Act and gerrymandering and expand automatic and same-day voter registration. Trump. Donald Trump does not share the values that Pope Francis says we must prioritize, and he is actively trying to limit your ability to vote against him. Trump wants to make mail-in voting illegal. His administration allows states to implement laws that disenfranchise voters, refuses to investigate voter roll purges, and defends gerrymandering. One thing I want to comment on that I just noticed this time around is that they refer to Biden as Vice President Biden, but they refer to Donald Trump as Donald Trump and not President Donald Trump. So you can already tell that they don't have much respect for our president. But anyways, let us get into the facts. So the Catholic Church, paragraph 2240, does tell us that we are supposed to vote. That we have the right to vote, and when we vote, we have co-responsibility in the common good. However, the Catechism of the Catholic Church strictly teaches against abortion. 
And it explains that if we refuse to assist in helping someone whose life is in danger, then we are indirectly killing that person. So we as Catholics cannot vote for a candidate that supports or advocates for abortion. So I find it very interesting here that they tell us to vote for Joe Biden, even though he has time and time again advocated for abortion. He said, Reproductive rights are a constitutional right, and in fact, every woman should have that right. Now, there's a video I've already done on this topic about voting for a pro-life candidate, and I'll have that video linked down below. They claim that Donald Trump is not in line with Pope Francis. However, Donald Trump is in line with the Catholic Church when it teaches that we cannot advocate for abortion. Donald Trump has time and time again fought against abortion. His own website says, President Trump recognizes the precious gift of life and protects the sanctity of life at all stages. Now there's more about this in a video which I'll have linked down below. Trump has done nothing to limit voting, nor has he ever said that he wanted to make mail-in voting illegal as the website claims. In fact, all the policies and all the rules and regulations that he's put in place or all the comments he's put in place is because he's caring about the safety of our voter and having our own say that the voter needs to have their say because they say that mail-in voting has no fraud behind it. However, history and stories and statistics have said otherwise. Now, I'm just going to give you guys a few examples of some things where voter fraud has taken place or someone has interfered or something has interfered with people's votes when it came to mail-in voting or other votings in past elections. And New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, is one that has fallen victim to voter fraud or voter interference a lot. This year in Morris County, a mail truck was set on fire and it's said to be believed that they were mail in ballots in the truck. In Somerset County, Republican voters for the primary elections received Democratic voters' ballots. The New Jersey Motor Commission apparently sent ballots to people twice. If a person changed their name legally, they received two ballots. Now, someone could be honest and not vote twice, but some people may see two ballots and vote twice, and so there is two votes to one person's name because their name was legally changed. In New Jersey, in May's local election, one out of 10 ballots were not counted. In North Carolina, in their 2018 congressional election, four people were arrested and charged for illegal handling of ballots. In Baldwin Park, California, about a week ago, for this 2020 election, people would drop off their ballots in the ballot drop-off box that they tell us are very, very safe. However, the mail-in ballot box was set on fire and all those ballots were burnt up, and so on. There are so many other instances where interferences have happened in voting and mail-in ballots or just voting in general, and I have a government document linked down below that has 1,000 cases of voter fraud. Now, let us move on to question number two. Question number two was, do you believe being pro-life encompasses more than a stance on abortion? The results, Biden. Vice President Biden would eliminate the death penalty and expand care for the vulnerable. He also understands that prioritizing the unborn means protecting pregnant mothers and providing them with the care they need. He supports expanding health care for pregnant mothers, paid family leave, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants and Children, also known as WIC, housing, and expanding affordable health care. Trump. Not only does Donald Trump support the death penalty, he believes that being pro-life means supporting abortion criminalization while rejecting every other policy that protects the unborn and pregnant mothers. The Trump administration has cut Medicaid, the healthcare program that many pregnant mothers rely on. He also wants to cut the Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP, which many mothers rely on provide healthcare for their children. Donald Trump is not pro-life. What I find really interesting here is that this question and these results honestly overlook the topic of abortion entirely. Like, as we saw the questions, they never get back to abortion. So they just overlook the topic of abortion. And you want to know why? It's because the candidate that they're advocating for is not pro-life at all. Donald Trump is pro-life. 
But anyways, let us get in to the facts. So what does Joe Biden say about abortion? Well, Joe Biden plans to stop states from violating laws that violate Roe v. Wade. He also plans to continue federal funding to Planned Parenthood. He also plans to rescind the global gag rule, which provides abortion services to people in other countries. Whereas Donald Trump plans to continue filling the Supreme Court and lower courts with people who follow the Constitution who do not have an abortion agenda, he plans to pass the Pain Capable Unborn Child Act the No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, and defund big industry abortion providers such as Planned Parenthood. They say Donald Trump isn't pro-life at all, but here it seems that he actually is. More on this topic in a previous video, which I'll have linked down below. Now, let us talk about the death penalty. Now, this is one that I'm not going to overlook. The Catechism of the Catholic Church does, in fact, say that we're not supposed to do the death penalty. And Donald Trump has said that he will resume capital punishment for people with grave offenses. Now, I wouldn't really know how to argue this, but through some research, I found that in 2018, the church changed its stance on capital punishment. Now, it's inadmissible, where if we looked at the Catechism of the Catholic Church edits of 92 and 97, we find that capital punishment is okay as long as it matches the gravity of the crime. You can read more about that in Jimmy Aiken's post, and I'll have that link down below. This post also mentions healthcare and says that Donald Trump is trying to get rid of healthcare. Well, actually, Donald Trump is actually working to make healthcare more accessible and better quality healthcare and more affordable. Trump has repealed the individual mandate of the ACA the Affordable Care Act, which if you didn't know what the individual mandate was, was that if you could not afford insurance, they would tax you and fine you if you didn't have insurance and you didn't have an exemption. And this was a part of the Affordable Care Act put by the Obama administration. So if you couldn't afford insurance, they would fine you and tax you for it. So Donald Trump got rid of that individual mandate. This claim also brings up the CHIP program saying that Donald Trump is trying to get rid of it, where actually Donald Trump has done a six year extension on the CHIP program. Now let us move on to question number three. Question number three says, do you support healthcare for all pregnant women? Biden. Vice President Biden supports expanding the ACA, providing great care to pregnant mothers and their babies. He has a plan to reduce maternal mortality nationwide. He supports the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, ensuring that having a child does not mean losing your job and your health insurance. He would expand the Violence Against Women Act, ensuring protections for pregnant mothers at a risk of domestic violence. Trump. Donald Trump has worked to end the Affordable Care Act, the legislation that protects pregnant women from being discriminated against by insurance companies. His efforts would allow pregnancy to be classified as a pre-existing condition. He has made it harder for pregnant women to access nutrition assistance, housing, and affordable childcare. Now let's look at the facts. Now, let us talk about the Affordable Care Act. Well, the Affordable Care Act sounds great, however, it increased taxes by a lot and it made premiums higher. And like I mentioned, the Affordable Care Act fined you if you weren't insured and you didn't receive an exemption. The Affordable Care Act increased taxes on medical devices and pharmaceuticals. As a result of the increase in prices, the higher premiums, employers ended up laying off employees so that they didn't have to pay for the coverage or they would cut employees hours so they didn't have to pay for the coverage. This left people without insurance and then they were fined and taxed. Due to this negative effect, President Trump has decided to reform the Affordable Care Act. In doing so, he plans to create a better healthcare system for patients and their providers. So he plans to cut drug prices, put patients and doctors back in charge of the healthcare system, lower healthcare premiums, cover all pre-existing conditions, protect Social Security and Medicare, and provide world-class health care for our veterans. Now let's move on to question number four. Do you support protections for people in poverty and without a home? Biden. Deeply influenced by Catholic teaching, Vice President Biden plans to build an economy where everyone comes along and the vulnerable are protected. He will increase the federal minimum wage to $15. He will guarantee that everyone has access to health care regardless of their income. He will provide financial assistance to families looking for housing and protect tenants from eviction. Trump. The Trump administration budget includes deep cuts for safety net programs like SNAP. Medicaid, housing assistance, and more. 
Trump does not want to protect people in poverty. He wants to attack them. The psych is making the claim that Joe Biden is like so deep in Catholic teaching, but Joe Biden advocates for abortion. You cannot be a Catholic and advocate for abortion. You can't. But anyways, let us get into the facts. Raising the minimum wage does not always correlate with helping the poor. Some people will benefit from the increase in the minimum wage, whereas some other people will actually hurt from it because employers may not be able to fund everyone $15 an hour per employee. So they will lay off people or cut their hours. A study done by the CBO actually corroborates this claim that Raising the minimum wage does not always result in benefit. Trump instead wants to put the power in the businesses' hands and allows for them to decide how much they want to pay their employees. And this is very, very important because we're not talking about all businesses being all equal. There are some major corporations and there's some small businesses, mom and dad shops, that can't afford to pay every employee $15 an hour. Today, one, one thing very quickly, but I want he to said get we have reaction. to help our small businesses by raising the minimum wage. That's not helping. I think it should be a state option. Alabama is different than New York. New York is different from Vermont. Every state is different. It should be a state you, option. You said very we recently. We have to help. It's very important. We have to help our small businesses. You, you How said, are you helping your small businesses when you're forcing wages? What's going to happen and what's been proven to happen is when you do that, these small businesses fire many of their employees. You said very Not recently true, you would consider the raising the federal minimum Say wage it. to $15 Say an it. hour. You said recently you would consider raising the federal minimum wage to $15 I, an really hour. Like, is that still the case? And I would consider it. In, to an extent, but in a what I really like, what I re in a second administration, but not to a level that's going to put all these businesses out of business. It should be a state option. Look, Every... I've lived in different places. I know different places. They're all different. Some places, fifteen dollars is not so bad. In other places, other states, fifteen dollars. Okay, would be President ruinous. Trump. Donald Trump does plan to, in fact, reform the programs that were mentioned in the claim. We're gonna talk about these programs in a little more depth in future questions, so hold your horses, we're gonna get to it. But actually reforming these programs will allow for the prices to go down, hence taxes will go down, and more money will stay in the American people's pockets. Now keep in mind that when systems are free and we have free programs, they're not actually free, there's someone else paying for them, hence the taxpayers. And so if taxpayers are allowed to keep the money that they earn instead of being taxed on it, maybe they won't need to qualify or be a part of those programs altogether. Now let's move on to question number five. Question number five says, do you support food assistance for mothers, infants, and children? Biden. Vice President Biden plans to strengthen food assistance for families through the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, and WIC. Biden will also provide $100 per month in extra nutritional support for low-income families until we are out of this recession. Trump. Trump's inaction on the COVID-19 pandemic has led to millions of Americans losing their job and ability to pay for food. His administration's plan to kick millions of Americans off a of SNAP leaving them unable to feed their families. Facts. Despite what a lot of people may believe or claim, Donald Trump wants to open up the country so that people can get back to work, where Democratic nominee Joe Biden has said that he will close the country if need be in the future, where Donald Trump understands that we need to get the country back open. All he does is talk about shutdowns, but forget about him. His Democrat governors, Cuomo in New York, you look at what's going on in California, you look at Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Democrats, Democrats all, they're shut down so tight and they're dying. They're dying. And he supports all these people. All he talks about is shutdowns. No, we're not going to shut down and we have to open our school. You talk about the science. If you're sworn in come January and, and we have and the flu combining, which many scientists have said is a real possibility, would you be prepared to shut this country down again? I would be prepared to do whatever it takes to save lives because we cannot get the country moving until we control the virus. That is the fundamental flaw of this administration's thinking to begin with. In order to keep the country running and moving and the economy growing and people employed, you have to fix the virus. You have to deal with the virus. Now, we keep seeing this criticism um, in debates, on the news of Donald Trump's handling of However, there was a pandemic that occurred 
during the Obama administration, which was the H1N1 disease, or also known as the swine flu. And what Joe Biden did when that occurred was not the best. And so he keeps claiming that he's going to do this amazing thing when in response to COVID. However, looking at what had occurred with the H1N1 kind of leaves people a little scared of his response to COVID if he were to be president. Now, what was his response to the H1N1? Now, mind you, the H1N1 disease, the swine flu disease, was not as lethal. It didn't have as much mortality rates that the coronavirus did. In fact, when the H1N1 disease was around, the states were actually told to stop doing testing and to stop counting individual tests. So this made the numbers of people who were actually sick to be incorrect. And so we don't have the actual numbers of those who got sick, those who were immune to the sickness, because the numbers were all up in the air. They stopped testing and they stopped counting. This is very different than what we have right now with this pandemic. In this pandemic, we're counting all the tests and we're counting every person that contracts this illness because we understand how important it is to know who's sick so that they can quarantine or take the precautions that they need to take. This claim also mentions SNAP. It says that Donald Trump is trying to get rid of SNAP or cut people off of SNAP. We're actually amidst this pandemic Donald Trump has actually increased benefits of SNAP by 40%, donating $2 billion to the program. And there were restrictions and increase of regulations for the SNAP program, but it was actually for good reason. SNAP has went from costing $250 million for 2.8 million people to under the Obama administration in 2013, costing $80 billion for 48 million recipients. Now, mind you, before this entire pandemic took place, we were at the lowest unemployment for all groups. And with this booming economy, it caused people to not need to be on these programs anymore. So by increasing the regulations of who could join it, made it so that all of the money that was going to this program could go to people who were actually in need of it. And it made taxpayer funding go down. Now, even though people like to claim that President Trump has done nothing during this pandemic to help out the American people, that is actually not true. I have a link down below listing everything that he's done for the country during this pandemic, but I will highlight two things. The first thing being that he invested $2 billion into community health centers. And the second thing being that he launched the Payback Protection Program, the PPP that gave money to the Catholic Church. And this program saved nearly 51 million million jobs. Now let's move on to question number six. Question number six asks, do you support protections for elderly people such as Medicare? Biden. Vice President Biden agrees with Pope Francis that our elderly must be cared for. Biden will protect Medicare and ensure that it can pay for the long-term care. Biden will also preserve and strengthen Social Security so that millions of Americans who depend on the program are protected while preparing the program for future retirees. Trump at the time when the elderly are at grave risk from COVID-19, the Trump administration has proposed rules relaxing the requirements tied to infection control in nursing homes and other healthcare facilities. Trump also wants to cut healthcare for the elderly. His proposed budgets would reduce federal spending on Medicare. So let's look at the facts. Trump has actually signed an executive order to improve older Americans' healthcare and improve the fiscal sustainability of Medicare. This allows for people to choose and access which health care that they want. He also brought a decline to Medicare Part D prescription drug prices so that they're cheaper for the consumer. This has saved beneficiaries $1.9 billion in premiums. President Trump has also directed for Medicare and Medicaid services, the CCMS, to raise the infectious disease standards at nursing homes across America. President Trump also in the midst of the pandemic has instructed the HHS to donate $1 billion to the elderly Americans so that they can receive foods at their homes, whether it's the foods being sent to them, or also received care at their homes so they do not have to go to the hospitals when they need care. Now let us move on to question number seven. Question number seven says, do you support the ability for workers to live in dignity with a living wage and a safe workplace? 
Biden. Vice President Biden supports increasing the federal minimum wage to $15. He supports the Protecting the Right to Organize Acts, the PRO Act, and its provisions protecting every worker's right to join a union. Biden would establish and enforce health and safety standards for all workplaces, ensuring that Americans can go back to work safely. Trump. The Trump administration opposes raising the federal minimum wage. Trump appointees have rolled back workers' rights to form unions and engage in collective bargaining. Trump has also weakened the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the OSHA, ordering OSHA leaders to focus on deregulation instead of worker safety during the so for this one, I was doing a lot of research, but since I don't know what it's like to work in a union and I don't know much about unions, I decided that I wasn't going to dive too deep in this. I figured that this was one that maybe you guys would want to look up. However, I did do some research on the PRO Act and it seems that there isn't many positives to it. For example, it says that workers have to pay dues to a union as a condition of their employment and that doesn't sound too nice. So anyways, guys, I didn't want to dive too deep in this but I do want to talk a little bit about once again the minimum wage the raising of the minimum wage we have to understand that not everywhere around the world this 15 or everywhere around the country this $15 an hour work for people I live in California and so working at McDonald's you get paid $15 an hour where when I visited Michigan McDonald's workers are not being paid $15 an hour in Texas. I'm sure they're not being paid $15 an hour in Kansas. I'm sure they're not being paid $15 an hour, but it really depends on the cost of living in California. It is so expensive to live the here. For instance, getting $15 an hour won't fund anything here. You can't even get an apartment for $15 an hour with that wage. However, if you take that money to a different state, that's like a lot, a lot of money. And so we have to understand that when we increase the prices of being what we're paid, it increases the prices of other things, increases the prices of product or the cost of living, and the numbers become inflated. For instance, a house in Michigan could be worth $200,000, where here in California, it's worth a million to two million dollars. I really suggest looking at the housing prices here and it's really because of the inflation of money in the state of California. So keep that in mind before you vote to increase the minimum wage and understand how it could actually hurt people because now small businesses are gonna have to lay off workers because they cannot afford to pay all of their employees $15 an hour. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on to question number eight. Now the reason why I cut question number seven short is because question number eight and nine are big questions with a lot of facts so buckle your buckles your seat belts your, your horse belts get ready these these are a lot so anyways let's see what question number eight says do you support the humane treatment of migrants biden Vice President Biden supports a humane immigration policy that keeps families together. Like Pope Francis, Biden believes that refugees should be welcomed, not jailed. He will create a path to citizenship for all dreamers who have become integral parts of our churches and communities. Trump. Donald Trump has separated families and locked immigrant children in cages. He has used racist and hateful rhetoric against immigrants of color. He has directed federal agencies to kidnap immigrants from their homes, churches, and hospitals. All right, let us get into the facts. Now, let's keep in mind that there's certain processes for everything. For instance, you can't just show up at a school and say, okay, I'm a student, take me in. There's processes, there's paperwork, there's things that have to go through that have to make sure you're vaccinated, they have to make sure that you live in the state, they have to make sure you live in the district, there are a lot of things that have to go through. This is the same for people seeking asylum in the United States. There's processes put in place. And this is not to restrict people from coming to the states that need to have refuge here. Instead, it's to protect them and protect the American citizens. For instance, to become a refugee here, you have to receive a referral and get accepted and then go through testings to make sure that you are coming here safely and that you're actually coming here for refuge. Now, it's unfortunate to say, but there have been some people who have abused the system and have come here for ulterior motives. So to protect the refugees and protect the American citizens, we make them go through a process so we know exactly who's coming into the country and why. 
Now this thing brings up the separation of families and so we're going to dive very deep into this because this is something that needs to be talked about because a lot of the information is misinformation and a lot of people are told lies or information is misconstrued which makes things sound way more horrible than it actually is and hopefully by the end of this you understand why there is separation of families at the border. So let us read what the Department of Homeland Security's website has to say on the matter. DHS does not have a blanket policy of separating families at the border. However, DHS does have a responsibility to protect all minors in our custody. This means DHS will separate adults and minors under certain circumstances. These circumstances include when DHS is unable to determine the familial relationship, when DHS determines that a child may be at risk with the parent or legal guardian, or when the parent or legal guardian is referred for criminal prosecution. So from this, we can see that the separation of adults from minors at the border is for the safety of the minor. If DHS finds that the guardian does not seem to be the parent or does not seem to be the legal guardian of that minor, they will separate them. If the guardian has criminal prosecutions or charges against them, they will separate them. If the child looks like it's being abused, they will separate them. The separation at the border is not to separate people because the United States is evil. It's to keep the minors safe safe. Now we do this with American minors. When we see a child being abused or the parents a criminal or we're not really sure if that child is with the right parents, we separate them and we have services for those children. So we keep all children in mind. We respect all stages of life and all life should be protected. And so here we are trying to protect these minors from possibly being abused or being used to get across the border. The DHS then goes on to explain Familial relationship. If there is a reason to question the claims familial relationship between adult and child, it is not appropriate to detain adults and children together. Human trafficking and smuggling. If there is a reason to suspect the purported parent or legal guardian of human trafficking or smuggling, DHS detains the adult in an appropriate secure detention facility separate from the minor. DHS continues to see instances and intelligence reports indicating minors are trafficked by unrelated adults, posing as family in effort to avoid detention. Safety risk. If there is a reason to suspect the purported parent or legal guardian poses a safety risk to the child, suspected child abuse, it is not appropriate to maintain the adult and child together. Criminal prosecution. If an adult is referred for criminal prosecution, the adult will be transferred to U.S. Marshals Service custody, and any children will be classified as an unaccompanied alien child and transferred to the Department of Health and Human Services custody. According to the DHS, there has been an increase of people posing as family units to get across the border. From October 2017 to February 2018, there was an increase of 315% of people posing as family units. And something absolutely horrible that needs to be addressed. A fusion study that was published by Pew Research found that 80% of women and girls that come to the United States through the Mexico way were found that they had been raped along the way. This is a very, very serious thing that needs to be addressed. Women and girls are being raped coming here. This further explains why there's a separation of adults and minors at the border. Because if they don't see a familial relationship between this adult and the minor, that child could be facing rape, could be facing trafficking. And so the border security needs to take this into account to protect all minors. Now let us talk about the cages because this is brought up a lot that apparently we separate families at the border and we put children in cages. So the DHS has actually responded to this. They said, DHS and HHS utilize short-term facilities in order to process and temporarily hold migrants that have been apprehended. These short-term facilities do not employ the use of cages to house minors. Certain facilities make use of barriers in order to separate minors of different genders and age groups for the safety of those who are being held. Additionally, CBP facilities have adequate temperature control and ventilation. ICE facilities are designed for longer-term detention of adults and in some cases, families. 
Also, something to note that these so-called cages that Donald Trump is oftentimes called responsible for were actually built and used during the Obama administration. However, as a DHS explained, they are not cages per se, they're centers to hold people while they're being processed. And let us move on to the final question, which is question number nine. This is also a lengthy one, so keep this in mind. So question number nine asks, do you reject the sins of racism and hatred? Biden. Vice President Biden embraces the Pope's call to address the sin of racism. He knows that Americans of color face systematic racism that holds them back and endangers their lives. He believes that Black Lives Matter, and he will work to root out the inequities in housing, health care, education, the economy, and our criminal justice system. Trump. Donald Trump spreads racism and hatred, utilizing it as a tool to turn our neighbors against one another. Trump has defended white supremacists and neo-Nazis as very fine people. He has told women of color to go back where they came from. He has shared video of his supporters shouting, white power. His words and actions are sinful and they are damaging our nation. So let us get into the facts. So first of all, Donald Trump has never said anything against Black Lives Matter, the phrase Black Lives Matter. He believes Black Lives Matter as he believes all lives matter. What he is against is the Black Lives Matter organization. Kelly, why is the president calling Black Lives Matter a symbol of hate? Well, what the president um, was noting is that uh, that symbol, um, when you look at some of the things that have been chanted by Black Lives Matter, like pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, um, that's not an acceptable phrase to paint on our streets. Look, he agrees um, that all Black Lives Matter, including that of Officer David Dorn, Patrick Underwood, two officers whose lives were tragically taken amid these riots. All black lives do matter. He agrees with that sentiment. But what he doesn't agree with is an organization that chants pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon about our police officers, our valiant heroes who are out on the street protecting us each and every day. The Pope Francis voter claims that Donald Trump has said racist things and has done racist things. However, there is no substantial evidence to back up this claim. Every claim about Donald Trump being a racist has been debunked. Now, I can go through all the most popular ones, but that's just going to take a lot of time. So I will address a few in this video. If I don't address the one that you're questioning, let me know, comment it down below, and I'll send you a link to the full video to give you full context of if he said something and it was misconstrued, or send you an article talking about how it's been debunked. So please check that out um, or comment down below so I can send you guys a proper link. Okay, one of the claims in the post is that Trump defends white supremacists and neo-Nazis. But is this true? No, Donald Trump has denounced white supremacists and neo-Nazis countless times. Right now, I'm going to include a snippet from a video of a compilation of times that Donald Trump has denounced white supremacists and neo-Nazis, and I'll have the full video linked down below. So if you want to check out the video, you can check it out then. But here's a quick snippet country that stands united in condemning hate and evil in all of its very ugly forms. The anti-Semitic threats targeting our Jewish community and community centers are horrible and are painful and a very sad reminder of the work that still must be done to root out hate and prejudice and evil the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. This website also makes a claim that Donald Trump said that white supremacists and neo-Nazis are very fine people. Is this true? Did he actually say this? No. 
he didn't. Now, to give you guys some context about this, he is talking about the Charlottesville protests that took place. People were wanting to take down statues, and so people went and protested the, against the taking down of statues. And by the end of the night, it resulted in a violent thing on both sides. There are both bad people on both sides, people protesting the protesters and the protest, some of the protesters themselves. Donald Trump explains this perfectly, so I'll include the full clip here. It's a little lengthy, but he explains that even though there were evil people on both sides, there were fine people on both sides, people who just wanted to protest the protesters and people that just wanted to protest the statues being taken down. But notice in the video, he clarifies that he is not talking about white supremacists or neo-Nazis. Let's take a look at the clip. Alt left and white supremacists on the same moral plane. I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other and they came at each other with clubs and it was vicious and it was horrible and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. <laughs> So you said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Are, are well, I do think there's blame. Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. And you don't have any doubt about it either. And only the Nazis. And, and if you reported it accurately, you would say. They showed up in Charlottesville to protest. Excuse me. They didn't put themselves down as you. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history, you're changing culture, and you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits, and with the helmets, and with the baseball bats. You, got a, you, had a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. This website also then claims that Donald Trump told women of color to go back to where they came from. But is this true? No, not necessarily. Now, this is in regards to a tweet that he made about Democratic Congresswomen who are telling him how to run his country. Let us read the tweet in full. So interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt and inept anywhere in the world, if they even have a functioning government at all, now loudly and viciously telling the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how it is done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. Now, at the end of this post, it does mention the video about the people shouting white power. And so I'm going to explain this. I do not think that this is a good look on Donald Trump at all. I think that he should have not retweeted it. And 
he says, or they claim that he says that it's because he didn't watch the video in full. I can only trust someone as much as I can. The video should have never been retweeted. I take pride in telling you guys information and facts and I always fact check myself. I always make sure that I'm not telling you guys something that's wrong. I would never retweet something if I don't find it factual or I haven't found basis behind it. So I think that this was a misjudgment on his part and I don't um, condone it at all. I think he should have um, went through it. I think his PR team should have went through it. But anyways, the video at hand is that there is a video that Donald Trump retweeted. Someone posted the video about Trump supporters and anti-Trump supporters um, getting into an argument, elderly people. They were getting into an argument. Some people were on golf carts. Some people were standing around. And they were shouting at each other. And one man decided that the right way to shout out someone is to shout out white power, which was so inappropriate. I'm not sure if he was being facetious or if that man is actually believed what he was saying. I don't know the people. I don't know them at all, but it was a horrible video. It shouldn't have been posted. It shouldn't have been retweeted. Um, people need to think a little further ahead before they say things. Um, it wasn't a good video and I wish that Donald Trump would have watched the video in its entirety before retweeting it because then it got him into the situation where I now it's retweeted. But he did delete the tweet, um, but yeah, I do not condone the video being tweeted. And so I look at this. I have backed up Donald Trump everything in all of these questions, but I'll admit when there is wrongdoing and that was wrongdoing, and I do not think that he should have done that. However, moving on, this claim also brings up saying that Joe Biden is trying to help out the judicial system, um, help out the criminal system. However, I don't believe that to be true. For instance, Joe Biden is responsible because he wrote the 94 crime bill, which had mass incarcerations of many, many people. And although he's received backlash from the media and other Democratic um, people who are running, he still stands by it and does not see anything necessarily wrong. He still has not denounced it, even though Bill Clinton denounced it himself. And um, Joe Biden seems as though he's not very um, sorry for passing it. And so I, yeah, it's just kind of a question. It's kind of ironic. Joe Biden has also said some questionable things, which I'm not going to go into depth about, but I'll have a video linked down below where it kind of wraps up a lot of things that Joe Biden has said. He said some questionable things to people that he's trying to get the vote of, and I don't think that that's the way of getting the vote. For instance, he told um, the black community that if they vote, don't vote for him, that they aren't black. He also said that poor kids are just as smart as white kids, insinuating that any minority group or anyone that's not white is poor. And there are other comments posted down below. I don't want to spend so much time on it because you know what? I'm not trying to destroy anyone's character. But if you guys want to know more about that, check the link down below. So guys, now we've looked through the nine questions and looked at the nine results from the voter, um, St. Francis voter website. I encourage you to check out the website. I also encourage you to fact check me. Go to the description, look at all the sources that I have posted and see whether or not I'm telling the truth. I tried fact checking as much as I could. It's so hard right now to find information because we know that Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of them are all censoring stuff. So we'll see if you guys actually get to see this video. But I really encourage you in this 2020 presidential election to vote Catholic. And even though it says that Pope Francis would vote for Joe Biden, and hence kind of what this website is saying, take it with a grain of salt because a lot of the things that Joe Biden stands for is not um, what Catholics stand for. And a lot of things that they accuse Donald Trump of doing are actually lies. And I find it very interesting that this website is misconstruing uh, a lot of what Donald Trump is saying or making a lot of claims about Donald Trump because us as Catholics know what it's like to have someone else say, hey, this is what you believe. We hear it so often from Protestants. They say, you worship Mary. You don't believe in God. You believe that the priest will save you. We hear so many claims coming from the Protestant side. And so we should look at this and say like, hey, we don't like when the Protestants lie about us or misconstrue what we say or try to say, oh, this is what they actually believe. So let's not do it to other people. That's why I'm not coming out here saying, this is how horrible Joe Biden is. And this is why you shouldn't like Joe Biden. I'm looking at the policies. I'm looking at the facts. 
Joe Biden is in support of abortion, and so keep that in mind when you're voting in the 2020 election. But without further ado, I hope you guys like this video. If you like the video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, the video, give it a dislike. Now, this video is probably not going to be monetized because there's so many topics I touched upon that YouTube does not want me talking about. So thank you guys so much. But if you guys want to help me out, um, my channel, check out my other videos. Also, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of me. If you don't want to see more of me, then you can click off or you can leave me a hate comment down below. I want to hear from you. Anyways, guys, look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Bye-bye.